Well, like how I don't want her to think that her father just abandoned her. How I would do anything for her. How no matter what I do, I'm always thinking about her. I'm going to spend my whole life loving her, and she's never even going to know. So sad, tears are in your eyes. Come on and come to me now. On March 31st, 2013, several news outlets reported that Corey Monteith, one of the breakout stars from Fox's smash hit Glee, had checked himself into rehab. For those closest to the 30 year old, it was a concerning development, but not necessarily a surprising one. The actor had previously opened up in a profile in Parade magazine a couple years earlier, openly discussing his drug and alcohol abuse that started when he was just 13 years old and landed him in rehab at the age of just 19 after his mother and a group of friends staged an intervention. Monteith says he went to rehab but went straight back to substance abuse after the rehab stint until what he called a, quote, crystallizing event in his young life when he stole a significant amount of money from a family member and got caught, calling it a cry for help. Monteith said the family member gave him an ultimatum. Get serious about getting clean or face the criminal consequences for the theft. He says the moment left such a strong impression on him that he resolved to start looking at my life and figure out why I'm doing this. And his life really did turn around. After moving to a small town in Canada to live with a family member, Monteith quit drugs, got various jobs including driving a school bus and even working as a roofer, but started to pursue his real passion, acting. He started working with an acting coach to fully commit to the dream and even scored a few minor roles in Final Destination 3, Whisper, and Deck the Halls. He even got a starring role in an MTV drama called Kaya about a band that became an overnight success. But the show lasted just a single season and was quickly off the air. Monteith, however, was just getting started. In 2009, he scored the role of Finn Hudson in Fox's new series, Glee. Although the show depended on casting actors with real vocal chops, Monteith more than made up for his fairly pedestrian singing abilities by capturing the character's innate sweetness and charm. Plus, as the popular star quarterback suddenly thrust into the geeky world of acapella singing, Monteith played the the fish-out-of-water aspect of the character perfectly, balancing his genuine love of singing with the social consequences of, well, joining the glee club. Just a small town girl Living in a lonely world The show absolutely took off, becoming a true phenomenon that dominated both television and radio. It ended up getting nominated for 19 Emmy Awards, four Golden Globes, and a raft of other awards, bringing in over 10 million viewers an episode at its peak and absolutely crushing Billboard records. In 2010, it placed 80 singles on the Billboard Hot 100, obliterating the previous record of 31 songs on the chart held by a little band called The Beatles. And then the Glee cast crushed the king of rock and roll himself, surpassing Elvis Presley as the act with the most songs ever placed on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The mashups and covers of popular songs from the hit show dominated the airwaves, and the stars of the show, including Monteith, Leah Michelle, Naya Rivera, and Mark Salling, turned into genuine superstars. Even for the steadiest temperament, the rapid onslaught of mega fame can be overwhelming and destabilizing. A former roommate said Monteith struggled with the incessant attention of the paparazzi, installing security cameras on his home, and expressing some paranoia that his car was being bugged by photogs who always seemed to know just where he was. Although he enjoyed the many romantic dalliances that come with fame, Monteith and co-star Leah Michelle began dating in early 2012, and the relationship seemed good for him. If nothing else, both of them were going through the same instant celebrity whirlwind, but behind the scenes, Monteith was struggling with how best to reconcile his massive popularity with his intense desire for privacy. Some of his old demons came back to haunt him, although Monteith assured his loved ones he had the substance issues under control. And it did seem like the star was able to right the ship after it was reported that he'd completed the treatment and emerged from rehab on April 26, 2013. Days later, Monteith and Michelle were spotted enjoying fish and chips with Corey's mother in Victoria, British Columbia, and taking in a Vancouver Canucks game. Less than three months later, on July 13th, Monteith was found dead in his hotel room at the Fairmont Pacific Rim Hotel in Vancouver. He was just 31 years old. I'm Derek Kaufman, 
I'm Jason Beckerman. And this is the first installment of Last Day's three-part series, The Glee Curse, Part 1, Cory Monty. News of Monteith's death spread quickly, but there was little mystery about what happened to the promising young talent. Corey had checked into the Fairmont seven days earlier on July 6, and he was seen spending time with friends in the area. On July 12, Monteith was out with friends, and security footage from the hotel showed him returning to his room in the early morning hours. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary on his social media either. His final treat was an irreverent joke about the movie Sharknado that appeared to indicate the actor was in good spirits. When the actor failed to check out the following morning, however, hotel staff entered his room around noon and found his body. The Vancouver Police Department stated that the cause of death was not immediately apparent, but ruled out foul play. The British Columbia Coroner Service ruled that the cause of death was, quote, mixed drug toxicity, and the manner of death was accidental. The toxicology report revealed the presence of alcohol, as well as heroin, codeine, and morphine, all heavy opiates, in Monty's system at the time of his death. Inside the room, investigators found two empty bottles of champagne, a spoon with drug residue on it, and a used hypodermic needle. You know, Jason, what's most fascinating about the coroner's report is how Monteith's recent successful rehab stint likely contributed to his death in the coroner's opinion. What the medical examiner said specifically was Monteith had experienced intermittent periods of drug abuse and abstinence throughout his life. I mentioned that his drug problems started way back when he was 13 years old, so he had been in and out of rehab. Is this sort of the idea that as you abstain from drug use, your tolerance goes down? It's something we've all experienced sort of anecdotally in our own lives when when we don't drink or whatever, we think we get drunk more quickly. Yeah, and all of a sudden you're a lightweight. And all of a sudden you're lightweight. Is that sort of the, the argument here as well, that by virtue of his abstinence over a period of time through sobriety... He then went back full scale, full tilt, and that's what caused ultimately caused it, his death. It's exactly right. The coroner said after a period of cessation from opioid drug use, a previously tolerated drug concentration level may become toxic and fatal. And it's exactly what you said. He was essentially vulnerable to this accidental overdose because as a prior drug abuser, he went back to his old levels of drug intake. And at that point, having completed the successful rehab stint, his body just couldn't take it at that level. So, look. I wanted to talk about this a little bit. We talked about it with Philip Seymour Hoffman as well, um, who took an inordinate amount of, of heroin that caused his death, but at the time had also been in and out of rehab. You know, sobriety, this is a difficult issue to talk about. Sobriety is obviously the preferable path, but there's dangers associated with getting clean cold turkey if you're not able to stay clean going forward. And, you know, we've we've discussed that there are rockers in history. Uh, Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones, Dave Gahan from Depeche Mode are the two most famous instances. Guys who sort of didn't go cold drugs. turkey, but yes. they did it and they were able to maintain it, which obviously that's rare though, right? It's Very rare that you rare. find somebody who's able to just moderate their drug use and use it sort of, you know, as a party drug, but not really to, as a, you know, to, in a dangerous quantity, I guess would be the best way to put it. It's also a luxury of being a sort of Keith Richards or Dave Gahan who have access to the very best type of drugs. They're not as uh, vulnerable to maybe sort of a bad batch with fentanyl in it. Yeah. They can access the right types of drugs and maybe moderate the use. I don't want to give a, a sort of a roadmap to how best to be a drug abuser, but they have been able to survive no, longer. But with those this guys method. also had unlimited resources, able to pay for therapists and coaches and everybody else to help them. This Keith Richards talked about this openly. I read his biography and he talks all the time about the fact that he was able to surround himself with the right people. He always says it's amazing he's alive, but nevertheless, to your point, he was able to buy the best of the best. He wasn't laced with anything else. And he was able to have people around him who could coach him through the dark times. That wasn't to say that he didn't have huge problems when he would go into the dark holes and have to come out of them again, but it's a little different than somebody like Corey Monteith, who was, you know, trying to do it on his own, largely going to rehab since leaving rehab and yes. then, you know, getting full, full tilt again. To bring a sort of more modern valence to it, we've heard this recently with Demi Lovato. Do you remember she brought up the term California sober? Yeah. Have you ever heard this yeah. term, which is a type of sobriety that isn't completely clean, but you sort of dabble in drug use. You socially smoke some pot, you right. socially drink. And there are certain personalities that can manage this. There are others that true, simply spiral true out True addicts will look at that, or people who work with addicts will look at that and say, what a dangerous thing that is. For I remember at the time when Demi Lovato said it, what a dangerous thing for somebody as popular and big as Demi Lovato to say, because it is rare the person who's an addict who can do what she, what she was able to do. Yeah. Monteith's body was cremated in Vancouver on July 17th, following a private viewing for his family and girlfriend. The response from the Glee-obsessed public was immediate and overwhelming. 
the fifth season of the show was postponed and premiered a week later than planned. The third episode, which aired in October 2013, served as a tribute to Monteith and focused on the death of his fictional character, Fizz Finn Hudson. Leah Michelle gave a touching tribute, which was clearly filled with a steel raw emotion of the loss. Nobody treat me with kid gloves, okay? I don't know what to say either. I loved Finn, and he loved me, and he loved all of you guys. I know he did. I like to sing in the car, and um, and before Finn, I used to sing alone. And this was the first song that I sang with him when we would drive around together, so this is for him. Following the episode, the show went on a hiatus to decide how to proceed. Series creator Ryan Murphy vowed to continue mentioning the Finn character despite Monteith's death, saying... We don't just say this is done and we're never going to go back to it, so that resonates throughout the year. Monteith also received an extended tribute from Jane Lynch at the 65th Primetime Emmy Awards in September 2013, summing up the late actor's effortless charm that made him such an instant favorite amongst friends and fans alike. It is remarkable and perhaps a little curious how quickly television shows become like families. This summer on our show Glee, we suffered a painful death in our family. Corey Monteith played Finn Hudson, a star quarterback turned wide-eyed, heartfelt glee singer. And from the first time you saw Corey, he had a star quality and a genuine sweetness that made it impossible not to fall in love with him. And millions did fall in love with Corey. And I'm here to say that all that warmth and that charm, that open-hearted quality that we loved in Corey was no act. You know, I can't overstate how shocking this was, given the size of the phenomenon. He was the first big death uh, for the sh- that the show experienced. And eventually the show would move on, but his character was always referenced and always part of the fabric of the show. And I point this out because a later episode we'll see that that's not always the case with how the Glee curse worked. But while the fans would eventually move on and sort of accept new characters and, and, and new storylines... Leah Michelle herself struggled with the loss greatly and sought refuge with her Glee family just to get through the most difficult days because they were dating at the time. And of course, given the popularity of the show and her personal relationship with Monteith, she was constantly fielding questions about his death and to her credit, handled it all with grace and poise well beyond her years. Here she is on Ellen just a few months after the death. I really feel like I'm still trying to figure out all of this, it's been only a few months, but um, my mom has experienced a lot of loss in her life and she told me at one point, she said there is an empowerment that comes with grief at some point, you find it, um, and it's, it's very hard, but you will find it. And I think that at a certain point, you can choose to sort of fall from this or you can choose to rise. And that's what I'm just trying to do my best for him, because I know that that's what he would have wanted, and to to just do my best and to you know hopefully make something you know positive for where I go in the rest of my life. You know, in the years that followed, she's constantly defending the memory of Corey Monteith. Whenever she gets asked about their time together, she told one news outlet, "I only have happy memories of Corey. He was not his addiction. Unfortunately, it won, but that wasn't who he was." Corey made me feel like a queen every day. From the minute he said, I'm your boyfriend, I loved every day, and I thank him for being the best boyfriend and making me feel so beautiful. I think something she's getting at here is that in the common recollection, Corey Monte is a guy who died of drug use. It was, he's not the guy who starred in Glee. We certainly know that about him, but I think that's what he's most known for, unfortunately, is the fact that he was a drug addict who died you know, in the, in the hotel room by himself. And I think what she's trying to say is, let's remember who this guy was to her personally, obviously. She was very close with him, both romantically, both on and off stage. And she's saying, let's not let that memory escape us. Yeah. And to your point, she is rowing against the current because I think that is the popular conception is the tragic life of Corey Monteith. And she wants to remember, look at this guy who was so charming on the show and was my boyfriend. Uh, Michelle also poured herself into her own music. She released several songs about Corey, which included references to his final words, including Hey You and If You Say So. And what strikes me about these references are they sound so much like young love. It's like, a, you know, what your boyfriend would text you. And she really sort of got in her feelings about this stuff. 
So Jason, take us into the counterfactual. This is a this is the key point for Corey Monteith, who was 30 years old when he passes away of this drug overdose. Glee was at the height of its fame when he passes away. So the possibilities are kind of endless for a guy like this. Just to hit on the point of Glee's enormous success at the moment and how famous these guys were, nobody gets 10 million views anymore. It's just impossible. Even back in 2013, 2013 no shows got those kinds of ratings. But Glee came along. It was an absolute phenomenon. It was maybe the last of the, maybe that in Game of Thrones, the last of the, like, the yeah. water cooler talk where everybody in the offices was watching the shame. The monoculture. Right. Yes. You always watched it the night it came out because you knew it was going to be spoiled for you afterwards because everybody was talking about it. And, you know, there's been other stars who have come up, and 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 he was by far the star of the show. He was one everybody loved. Liam show has always sort of had a hot and cold relationship with the audience, not Corey Monty. No. Everybody loved this guy. It reminds me a lot of Ashton Kutcher when he came along. He did that 70s show. He was sort of a, like, like Corey, a bit actor here and there. He comes along, very good looking like Corey was, kind of took the world by storm, extremely charming. People saw that he had both Ashton and Corey had a huge future in front of them that was gonna that was gonna last much longer than the shows they were on, and I think there's a you know they're both very handsome kids and the whole thing. I think there was a lot of cor- you know it, a lot of similarities. There. It's a great analog. Ashton Kutcher was just a model. He was a male yeah. model. I remember he had did underwear ads for like Calvin Klein. He comes on that '70s show. You see that charm, and and they shared that sort of sweetness and that charm that uh, they were able to convey. And Ashton Kutcher went on to become a massive movie star. So that potential was there. I want to push back and say there was another road he could have gone down given his start, and that's the road of Chris Klein. Do you remember the American Pie movies? Sure. There was the handsome jock who joins the singing club. Uh, That was Chris Klein's character. And aesthetically, he looks a lot like Corey Monty. They, They share a sort of boyish, uh, very pale skin, sort of dopey <laughs> grin kind of look yeah. that was dreamy to girls. But both sang, right? He also sang and in American sang, Pie. Sang their hearts out. Yeah. And, you know, Klein shot to fame um, after playing that boyishly naive jock in the movie. Um, his career afterwards, where he could have capitalized and maybe become a leading man in some romantic comedies, never really coalesced. And, you know, no knock on Chris Klein, who had a, a serviceable career, but the biggest stars to come out of that were Jason Biggs, Sean William Scott, Bina Suvari, uh, you know, Natasha Leone, Tara Reed. It wasn't really Chris Klein whose career exploded. And there's a chance that unless you have the chops to really pursue the acting career, Monteith might have gone down that road. Well, I, I it's I suppose, hard to know. It, it's it's hard to know. I mean, I, w- it's interesting. None of the folks from Glee have really gone on to huge success in acting. Chris Colfer is a, an enormous author and has done it, done it that way. A tremendous but, uh, author. Yeah, yes, he, my yeah. children read For anybody books. who doesn't have kids, he, you don't have to know how big this guy is. But but none of them have found real success in acting. I wonder if he would have been the one. I mean, I think he, he was the person who, again, gained the most fame, the most popularity coming out of the show. But it's really hard to know how much success he would have had. But he died so young. He, he had a so ton young. of charisma, though. He there did. was a certain twinkle when you would yeah. see Finn Hudson on that show. Um, we do have an indication of where his career was going, given the time he died, because there's a posthumous release of a small indie movie called All the Wrong Reasons. I confess, I haven't seen the movie, but I did watch the trailer and some clips online. It was a dramedy showing the intersecting lives of like a store manager dealing with a, a, a suicide and how these lives sort of intersect. We've seen movies like this. He's quite good in, in, yeah. in the clips that I've seen. I think he had something to him. He had uh, more than just the gear that you had to show on Glee. So I, I do like to think, look, he died at 30 years old. Yeah. His whole life was in yeah. front of Glee him. Glee kind of as a show came crashing down, right? As yeah. popular as it was, it sort of really fell off a cliff towards the last couple of seasons. I think it brought some of the actors down with him. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, it, you know, I, I mean, it's a, it's a sad thing. Really would have loved to see how it all played out for Corey Monty. Same, same. So although Glee continued through another couple seasons without Monteith, his girlfriend, Leah Michelle, never forgot her late beau and always makes a point of paying tribute to him each July 13th, the anniversary of his death. In addition to getting a tattoo of his character's jersey number on her side and the name Finn written on her lower back, Michelle still gushes about her time with Monteith and defends his memory whenever asked about it, as I mentioned. And so I thought it only fitting to give her the final word with her touching post on the 10-year anniversary of his passing, which just passed. Hey you, 10 years. It feels like only yesterday that you were here and yet a million years ago, all at the same time. 
I hold all of our memories in my heart where they will stay safe and never forgotten. We miss you every day and we'll never forget the light you brought to us all. I miss you, big guy. Thank you.